Well, of course, uh, medical information is continually being developed, and um, there is no way for the most current information to be available at all times. Um, there will always be a lag time in that information coming out. Uh, many people are still bound by their beliefs of the past, and even when they read this new information about what endometriosis can really look like, they say to themselves, no, this, this, this just can't be true. This is, this is too fundamental for someone to have figured out. Uh, you know, it, it can't be true because it, it raises so many serious questions about what we've been doing for the last 60 years. Uh, and so even though they may read it, there needs to come the next psychic process of accepting it. And that acceptance can come only by proving it to themselves and their own patients. So you, your new research, for instance, um uh, does it get sent out to different doctors in Canada? Or well, um, I've had eight publications in the medical literature, and uh, I speak at meetings. We have videotapes available. So, um, but is it, is it up to them to get these, um, the papers that you write, or, or does it, is there some sort of system whereby it automatically? Um, well, of course, if it's published, it's sent out all over the world in the medical journal. Uh, it depends on the on the interest of the physician at the other end. Uh, if a physician is interested in endometriosis and has a time, you know, to devote to it, uh, he may well be able to read much of the endometriosis literature and, and stay quite current. On the other hand, if a physician is busy delivering babies and running a mile a minute and going in, uh, off in different directions, it may be difficult to keep up uh, with the endometriosis literature. Uh, and so, you know, he'll be a little bit, you know, out of step. If he's out of step, then what does a patient do to get information? A patient has access to all the medical literature, just like the doctor. Uh, uh, she can go to a library and have the librarian perform a literature search of the medical literature. There's a lot of lay literature uh, on endometriosis uh, put out by the Endometriosis Association and other uh, groups. And I found much of that lay literature to be quite accurate and actually more up-to-date frequently than what's in the medical literature. So uh, patients with endometriosis uh, basically need to be persistent in their you know, pursuit of answers that satisfy them. And that was my next question. Are the textbooks up-to-date? Textbooks, textbooks of medicine are always between six months and two years out of date, at least. That's just the nature of publishing. It takes a long time to put a textbook together. Uh, by the time it's completed, uh, new information is already online. So is there, in your opinion, a need for more knowledge on it more research? Of course there is need for more knowledge and research on endometriosis. Uh, uh, there are so many unanswered questions, there's so much confusion, there's so many problems present with treating disease uh, that we, we need to get more answers desperately. Uh, we will get those answers only by studying the disease, and by that I mean actually identifying the disease, removing it in a way that doesn't destroy it so that you can study it under the microscope or other biochemical studies so that we can find out more about the, the basic science of endometriosis. What's happening now in the study of endometriosis frequently is people have assumed that we have all the answers uh, as to the origin and they assume that we have all the answers with, regarding the visual appearance and um, uh, they, have, they, have, they have difficulty believing that maybe we've been wrong in many fundamental ways for 60 years. And so they, they build in that much of what we have been uh, focusing on for 60 years you know, may be in error. And so that inertia uh, you know, slows them down from you know, looking uh, at, at new avenues in the disease. What is happening is they are focusing on uh, more and more on treatments, uh, medical treatments particularly of the disease, that get several stages away from the actualities of the disease in the pelvis itself. And um, if, if the foundation uh, that medical therapy is, is based on is, is faulty, then the further and further out you get, uh, the, the shakier your conclusions will be and the, le and the less to the mark they'll be. And that's a dangerous situation for our profession and for our patients. So in addressing what future direction should end of research take, uh, does it have to start at the foundations of new doctors learning coming it's, it's It's likely, uh, and this is, it, it's been noticed by other scientists in other disciplines that uh, new ideas don't triumph all the time by their own 
moral authority or, or weight of evidence. They triumph in part simply by uh, the older generation dying off and the uh, newer generation being exposed to these new ideas from the start, testing them in their own hands, uh, confirming them or uh, refuting them. Uh, and that's the, that's the essence of scientific process. It's not always rapid. I'm curious, do you ever have uh, interns come in and, and you teach them your new I, I have a few physicians who have come to see me, you know, to watch me in surgery. Uh, it is difficult to get to Bend. Uh, it's geographically isolated, uh, and so it's difficult for physicians, you know, to come here. Bend, Oregon is a special place. Uh, the work that I've done probably could not have been done anywhere else in the country. Uh, out here, we're literally on the American frontier. Uh, we're free to think free thoughts. Uh, if I were working in a large metropolitan medical center or at a medical school, uh, uh, these, these types of concepts uh, would be scoffed at perhaps and uh, I never would have gotten a chance to uh, pursue them in my own patients uh, and to my own intellectual satisfaction. And so I think, you know, Bend is special in that regard because it's given me the freedom to try to pursue the truth about endometriosis. Uh, people often ask, uh, either to my face or state behind my back, well, if, if this guy is so hot, what is he doing in Bend, Oregon? Why isn't, he, uh, why isn't he doing this type of surgery in downtown New York City uh, or in Los Angeles or in Vancouver or Seattle or some other major metropolitan area? And uh, these people, of course, uh, have not been to Bend uh, and don't know what it's like to live here. Uh, Every patient who comes here for surgery uh, entertains thoughts of moving here uh, to live because it's it's the it's a most beautiful place uh, to live. Four, four or five women's mm -hmm. personal histories. So many things that you've said cut to something that they've said mm -hmm. exactly to that. I was yeah. thinking of the women. Case. Will all often feel with what you said, but we haven't got exactly. That. <laughs> for the documentary itself, as well as the uh, part of what we're doing is that we're approaching the national. Uh, patients, you know, that I've treated, you know, annually. Uh, we, if you, I mean, we, why don't we finish the interview? We can get you mm -hmm. to read some of those things, because, yeah. I mean, okay. it would be much more interesting than us All doing right. a voiceover. So we're right up to um, the Endometriosis Association, which you've mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. um, do you think it plays a, a good role, a big role, in, in combating the disease, helping women? I think the Endometriosis Association plays a phenomenal role in helping women. Uh, one of the most important things it does is it helps the, the patient to validate that their own symptoms are important and mean something because they have been told at every turn of the, of the way that uh, by their family, friends, and physicians that their, their, their pain is meaningless or it's due to something else which is all in their head. Uh, and uh, to, to know that there is a large organization out there uh, with other, you know, formed exclusively to help her and other women with the disease uh, is great comfort to them. Uh, I'm an advisor for that association, so uh, I'm able to play some role in terms of uh, helping get accurate information you know, to the patients. Uh, the, uh, the patients can then put pressure on their doctor to affect medical change on this disease. And do you believe there's a need for more visual information increasing the public and medical awareness of the disease? Endometriosis is not only the most common gynecological disease. Endometriosis is possibly the most common human disease. It's much more common than almost anything else you can think of. Diabetes, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, certain forms of, you know, it's, it's much more common than breast cancer, for instance. Uh, endometriosis may be the most common human condition there is. It happens just to occur in women and not in men and so and it's a it's in a place where you can't see it and it's it occurs in a place and produces symptoms that you can't talk about in the checkout line at the grocery store uh, and so for all these reasons it's swept under the carpet and yet if endometriosis is the most common human condition in terms of numbers because 15 percent you know of the, of the female population is affected uh, and sometimes severely so then endometriosis should be on everyone's lips uh, there should be telethons about the disease. Uh, it should be something that uh, every 
school-age child is taught about because so many of the girls will have it. Uh, it it's, it's, it what's remarkable to me is that so few people know about it. And um, I, I think it has to do with just the fact that it's, it's, it's totally misunderstood at every level. Do you counsel the spouses of your patients? And uh, that goes along with the next question. With, uh, sometimes there's uh, pain with sexual intercourse involved, and um, they, they, they don't realize where this pain is coming from. And if a patient has painful sexual intercourse, uh, that, that of course will affect her spouse. Uh, if she has painful sexual intercourse, presumably there is a physical reason for it. Uh, and that physical reason is usually going to be endometriosis. Uh, and if the patient is bothered by any symptom of pain, whether it's painful intercourse, painful bowel movements, pain sitting around doing nothing, she needs surgical diagnosis of that pain. Uh, and then she needs treatment for the cause of that pain. Uh, since endometriosis is not eradicated by medical therapy, uh, the, the treatment of endometriosis usually winds up being surgical in many patients. Do the spouses feel comfortable uh, coming in to, to talk? Do, do many of the women bring their spouses in? Most of, most of the married patients that I see uh, bring their husbands with them, and uh, frequently they're in the exam room and then, of course, in my office for consultation afterwards. Uh, the husband frequently lets the, the wife do all the talking because she's experienced the disease. Um, I, I get a feeling that the husband is, is frequently suffering from this sense of helplessness that, you know, hey, here's this woman, you know, that I married her when she was, you know, young and vibrant, and then now something has happened to her over the last five or ten years that has turned her into a different person. Uh, I've tried to help. I've tried to understand. I can't. Uh, and many times, you know, the husband has given up. This is a, this is a disease that affects the entire family. Last question. Some people consider your technique radical and unproven. How do you feel about this? Excision of endometriosis uh, is the oldest form of treatment of the disease. Before there were lasers, before there was electrocautery, before there was danazole, before there was, before there was birth control pills, GnRH agonist, gestrinone, RU486, there was excision of endometriosis. Uh, in terms of surgical therapy, probably more women have been treated over the years by excision of endometriosis than all other surgical modalities combined. Since what I do is excision of endometriosis, uh, I, I have difficulty understanding uh, why people would consider this radical, since uh, it's just basically the, the same kind of conventional surgery that has been done uh, in, most, in, in many women for many decades. Uh, the fact that I can do it in most patients through the laparoscope, uh, through smaller incisions, using smaller uh, scissors and graspers, uh, is meaningless. The surgery is still the same. Uh, in terms of surgical treatment of endometriosis, uh, the, CP t the CPT codebook uh, has only one code for uh, surgical treatment. Uh, and that code is treatment of endometriosis. The CPT code book that we code out our surgeries for billing uh, has only one uh, type of surgical procedure listed, and that is excision of endometriomata of the pelvis by any method. Uh, so the procedure that I use even has its own CPT code, whereas laser vaporization uh, does not have a specific CPT code, you know, for that. Um, so, you know, it could be in terms of the color. If people think that that uh, the the as the assertion that endometriosis has a variety of colors, including colorless, uh, is is radical, uh, then basically they are they are indicating their own ignorance uh, by not keeping up with the literature. Because there have been two or three other studies uh, in the recent years that have confirmed exactly what I've said about the visual appearance of the disease. So people who uh, think you know, that I'm doing something radical uh, or mysterious, uh, again, basically are, are showing their own ignorance of endometriosis and, and their inability to keep up with the medical literature. Uh, and I don't know whether you know, we, you know, we should feel comfortable with that type of attitude in medicine, because uh, in the next sentence, it brings to mind that you know, are these people against, you know, bona fide scientific pro progress and, uh, under and greater understanding of disease processes? 
if, if, if the person is saying that they are against bona fide scientific process that has been confirmed by other independent researchers, uh, you know, then, then basically I'm quite sure we don't want somebody like that practicing medicine. Um, I actually just had one more question mm -hmm. about diet because it, it has been said that if you take meat out of the diet, mm -hmm. which has, you know, the hormones, that it might help. Uh, I don't prescribe any dietary changes for endometriosis. Um, I prescribe removal of the disease. Um, so there, there have been studies that have indicated that uh, sources of arachidonic acid in the diet contribute to the production of uh, certain kinds of prostaglandins that cause pain, and uh, meats contain uh, the precursors of these bad prostaglandins, whereas uh, Diets rich in, you know, fish or vegetables don't contain uh, these bad precursors, and there have been there's been at least one study that it's found that uh, symptoms of endometriosis seem to be less in women who uh, avoid these uh, arachidonic acid precursors. Who comes into your office? How does she describe her pain? Pain is the most common symptom of the disease. The pain is frequently described as a sharp, burning stabbing knife-like kind of pain. Very commonly the patient will twist her fist either towards me or towards herself uh, as if to emphasize the sharp stabbing nature of the pain as if she's plunging a knife into her own belly. Twist their fist towards me or stab it towards them.